Welcome to Get It Done Entrepreneurs, where we talk with founders of companies who bet on themselves in one. My name is Rich Lebrun, and I am the founder and CEO of Lebrun Advisory Group. You can find us at rlebrun.com. Our mission is to help our clients build wealth through business ownership. Stick around to the end of the show, and we'll reveal how you can be our next guest. Our special guest today is Robert Shuman from Robert Shuman Worldwide. He's got a phenomenal background, and I'm going to attempt to cover it all here shortly. He's a wealth advisor for both CNN and Fox News, New York Times, and Wall Street Journal. He's a best-selling author with 16 titles, including his mega success. I love this title. How come that idiot's rich and I'm not? And he's got another book called Seven Secrets of the Money Masters. Maybe Robert can share a little bit about that on the, on the show. Robert is one of the world's most sought-after real estate investors, entrepreneur, and wealth creation experts today. Robert has helped thousands attain total financial freedom for life through his wealth building strategies, while his charitable work, both at home and abroad, has contributed to lifting distressed communities out of poverty and despair. Not only has Robert helped thousands of people, but he also has been instrumental in help, instrumental in help leading businesses achieve financial success, even though many of those businesses had no investment experience, no financial savvy, and little to no money in the bank. His seminars on attracting, growing, and securing lasting wealth are so popular that they are held in standing room only crowds in cities around the world. Robert has worked with high net worth individuals, including in current and former Goldman Sachs executives. He's cr helped create numerous companies and charities and has in been involved in over 1,000 real estate transactions to date, totaling hundreds of millions of dollars. Robert has, has extensive background in finance. Has made Rob, he has made his company one of the top speakers in, in conferences and seminars around the world. Robert has shared the stage with such financial luminaries as Robert Kiyosaki, David Box, Suzanne Orban, Donald Trump, Tony Robbins. He's got a doctor in law of, and, and a master in business administration from Emory University. University, excuse me. He's again, New York Times bestselling author of 16 books. He helped create a hedge fund and numerous successful startups. He has created managed several international charities and helped start create many successful companies. I can go on and on and on, but unfortunately, we're out of time for the introduction. We need to get to meet Robert. Welcome, Robert. Rich, so good to be here. and Welcome, everybody. What an honor to be with you today. It's really a joy for you to be here. And I know just, just reading your resume, you're a busy guy. So uh, thanks for taking out time and your time out of your day to be willing to share your insight and wisdom with our listeners. So with that, let's jump in, Robert. I'd like to hear your story, if you can go back in time. Uh, why did you start your company? How did you start it? Was it voluntary, involuntary? What's your story and what's some of the thought process you went through to decide to go all in and start your own company? Well, great questions. First of all, my uh, entree into entrepreneurship was a complete accident, but I don't believe in accidents. Everything happens for a good reason. We're all here for a good reason. Uh, number two, I wish I would have given a lot of thought process to it, but I believe... Um, Success comes in quantum seconds and minutes when you make a decision. Of course, you have to work. So here's what happened to me. There, there's absolutely no reason I should be here today. Um, you know, and I'll tell you why. Um, I uh, pretty much flunked out of school, never graduated high school, had a speech impediment. Uh, uh, taught by my mommy until I was about 10. And then a woman taught me how to speak. Uh, like a lot of people grew up with a lot of negativity. You know, what's wrong with him? He can't do anything. I had braces on my legs. Uh, once they taught me how to speak, uh, which kind of my, a lot of my family is regretting it now <laughs> because I won't stop talking. <laughs> uh, they thought everything okay, but I, I flunked out of school pretty much, never got a diploma. Uh, when I was 18, uh, I realized that I was told I had dyslexia a little late. <laughs> uh, that's why I didn't do so well in school. So a lot of things that you do that are easy for you, I, I really can't do. I, I don't use computers very well. I, I don't type. I record all my books. Anyway, I... Uh, was always told what's wrong with you. You'll never amount to anything. Um, uh, come from a very humble background. My family taught me, uh, the rich are rich, the poor are poor. We're not rich. Uh, go to work. If you don't like it, suffer, work harder, go as much school as you can. If you don't like it, go to more school, suffer. And anyway, um, uh, I thought that was it. My family was like, Hey, we have no money. Uh, we're not in the money club. We don't have a chance <laughs> basically. So, uh, 
here's what happened to me when I was about uh, 28, 29 years old, I was pretty much going nowhere. I was working in restaurants as a waiter. Uh, I took a job uh, selling insurance. I never sold any, <laughs> never made a commission, commission only. And in one day, my life changed. I was referred to this gentleman who so was very wealthy. And I thought rich people were smart, came from rich families. You had to have money to make money. Um, we didn't. Uh, and I met this guy named Ray, who was a real estate investor. I went to his office. I knew nothing about him. He had all this junk laying around, an old pickup truck. And uh, I walked in his office. We were taught to look for signs of wealth. He had none. No computer. Remember that. Very simple. And I'll talk to him for a few minutes. And I go, well, obviously, uh, I had a pretty bad attitude back then. I said, obviously, you know, the insurance where I work with only works with people like three to five million dollars plus. Obviously, uh, you don't fit in that category from your looks and your office, all those broken doors and windows laying around. And I walked out. <laughs> and I forgot to ask him what he did for a living. I was so kind of rude, short, negative, stressed out about money. I went back to his office, baiting on his door. He goes, what are you doing back here? And a very simple guy with his wife in his early 60s. And I said, I forgot to ask you a question. And here's what I said, and I regret it the way I said it. I would never do this now. Um, I said, what do you do for living amongst all this junk? <laughs> and whether people live or work, they think it's nice or, you know, everybody's different. And he grabbed me by the collar, took me in the back, and he said, I'll never forget. He said, I'm not smart like you, Sonny. I'm like, what? He goes, I never graduated high school. I'm like, me neither. And he showed me this old accounting book. He had no computer. He had 121 properties paid for. He was making over a million dollars a year. He told me how he started buying houses subject to with almost no money, no credit. And in, in, in five minutes, three minutes, I'm looking at this guy, you know, kind of like Jed Klamer from the Beverly Hillbillies. Remember that show? You know, real I do. I do. And I'm going, if this guy can do this, maybe I got a chance. And in one second, my whole programming changed and I asked him to show me how to do it. He charged me some money, you know, as a mentor. He showed me exactly how to find houses, buy them. I didn't have any money. I was so negative. I'm like, hey, I found a deal below market, but I have no money. I went to the bank. I have 180 bucks in my checking account. And I said, I can't buy it. He goes, you're absolutely right. I'm like, thank you, because most people want to be right, Rich. You know, I don't want to be right anymore. I just want to be happy, healthy, uh, be of service, and be really rich. <laughs> I don't care who's right and wrong. You got to have an open mind. And he said, with that attitude, asking the questions you asked, you, you can't find money. I go, well, how do I find the money? He goes, well, we have 11 ways. One of them is money partners. The question is, how do I find the money? How do I find the deal? How do I get started? Not that I don't have money. I can't do it. It's impossible. And I, I, he told me how to make a one sheet of the property, the deal. Basically, go talk to 10 or 11 people. And here's something genius. He said, when you need money, never ask for money. Ask for their opinion. <laughs> Don't it. go to the bank or the fund or the rich relative and say, I need 50 grand, 5 million. I got to start this business. He goes, hey, I've got this idea. I'm doing real estate. I found these deals. I'm fixing them and renting them and selling them. You know, Rich, you're a smart guy. You got 15 minutes. I love your opinion. This is about money. Got to be honest. Nope. And I went to like 15 people. The first five said, wow, what a great deal. But uh, I would never invest in real estate. Too risky. Not for me. I do this. And, you know, the the eighth or ninth person said, hey, I've got money, I've got credit. You do the work, I'll find the money, we'll split the deals. I'll have my lawyer write it up and protect us. And uh, I still, to this day, even though I now have money and credit, uh, I do 99% of my deals with money partners. Why? <laughs> I was taught to raise money to buy houses and buildings and hotels and shopping centers. And it was just a life changer. Um, I, I kept my job at the restaurant for about a year because I did nothing like most entrepreneurs. I was in my head analyzing, researching, scared to death to make an offer, scared to death to follow the system. Uh, then I had to make the biggest decision all entrepreneurs have to make. And that is I had to let go. Stop debating, stop analyzing and start doing. And I'll never forget the day I did it. I went to my mentor and said, hey, I I've been debating you. I need help. Show me how to do it. And I let go and boom, I got my deal closed in 30 days. In one year, I closed 14 properties part-time while I'm working full-time at the restaurant, the insurance company. I literally had three to five hours a week. And in one year, I was making like eight grand net from my real estate and making like four grand net from the, you know, working double shifts. And I go, I can't afford to go to work anymore. So there's two schools of thought, you know, quit your job, go 100% in the, in the business. I've done that too later in life. 
I like that, that commitment, burn the boats, don't go back. Mm -hmm. But I was very scared and conservative. So I kept my job until literally I couldn't afford to go to work anymore. <laughs> and so um, you're all in. You decided just to uh, jump in and go for it. How old were you at the time? Well, I, I was turned about 30 when I actually did all this. And at 30 something, I had, uh, you know, 31, I had all these 14 properties. I was making good money tax free because of rentals and depreciation, running your own business, which is a big benefit of starting your own business. A lot sure. of talk about. You know, when, when I worked for the restaurant, they took, you know, 30, 40% of my income off the top, you know, right. I had no write offs. And when you run your own business, you know, talk to your accounts, every business mm -hmm. is different. And, and my mentor said that he goes, Robert, if you do this right, just the tax benefits alone will get your investment back. And I never really understood that. But, you know, as, as an entrepreneur, I write off my travel. I write off my hotels. I, I write off pretty much everything illegally. You know, 70% uh, of this, 80% of my phone. Sure. My cameras, um, and that's a big deal about uh, running your own business. When you work for somebody else, it, you know, it's really hard to get wealthy because there's so many people have their hand in that pie. Um, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And well, let me ask you a question. Let's go back if you can. Now you've been sure. you obviously you're you're far from that starting point today. You've opened up multiple companies, help other people grow and expand. But looking back, is there anything you would have done differently? And uh, maybe one or two things you key decisions you would have done differently? Absolutely. I think the biggest one is is fear. I was just so scared to do anything, even though I saw my mentor and my other people making the deals, making the money. You know, when you change from that, the biggest part is mindset. You mm -hmm. know, my mindset was and I, risk. And I, and the biggest mistake was I listened to non-experts. And the interesting thing, Rich, is most of them had the same last name as me. I called my family <laughs> and friends. Yeah, you are like, don't do it. You're going to lose. It's risky because they haven't done it. They haven't made that jump. And everyone told me uh, the 20 reasons why I'm going to fail. And I, and I kind of believed them. And I believed I was going to fail in the beginning because it was new and the fear of not taking action, just being stuck in that a paralysis of analysis. How many of y'all have done that? You know, been looking at stock trading or real estate or opening an online store or starting a franchise. And I've been analyzing it for three years <laughs> or talking yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah. And you just got to make the jump. The, the only way to learn is to do, uh, you know, get help, get educated, you know, get a mentor, get somebody. But that was the biggest mistake I made. Number two, and I think this is a big one, if you don't mind, on personal. Yeah. Uh, I got about 14 properties. I had 28 tenants, was doing some rehabs, and I kind of retired for a year. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was 30 years old, 31. And then I said, well, if it works for 14, it's got to work with 30. Then I went to 100, then 300, then 500. And why do we all start our own business? A, uh, to get financial freedom, to stop making other people rich. Or B, we want to have an impact. So I did it for financial freedom. I thought I could never do it, but I did it. And what happens? We start working harder and more than we ever did when we worked for somewhere else. The entrepreneurial dream and nightmare. And I'll never forget, I, I had a son later and I had all these properties and I'm with him on a Saturday. I had hundreds of properties, employees. I'm doing great. I'm making money. I'm loving it. And on Saturday, I was taking my son to the train store where he played with the trains. And, he, and I contractor called, my partner called, my bank, you know, my financer, financial partner called. And my son at eight said to me, dad, he goes, you like your phone in business better than me. Mm, that's a tough one. And, and, you know, life, we have these moments. And I had a moment. I'm like, what? I said, son, you're wrong. We hear something we don't like that hits a button. You know, we debate it. I said, you're the most important thing to me, my family. That's why I'm working. That's why I'm building my business. He goes, dad, you're never with me. You're always on the phone talking to tenants and whatever. And he kept saying it over and over again. And I had one of the most shocking moments of my life. I said, why did I build my business to spend time with my family? And what am I doing? Working all the time. And I loved it. And I literally stopped. Second big uh, aha moment is I needed a team and a system. I was doing everything myself. I was the manager, the accountant, the controller, the CFO, the mm -hmm. CEO, the CBO, the <laughs> And I think a lot of entrepreneurs fall in that trap. And I literally stopped, hired more mentors, took six months off, rebuilt my business. So yeah, you have to work. Yeah, you have to watch things. But I built a real team and real system where I'm free. You know, if I have to leave or I want to take a month off, I can. You know, sometimes, so many times I hear it's always the owner of the business that can't get out of their own way. That's right. Until they have some, some event or somebody reminds you of why you got into business in the first place. Yeah. 
But you you heeded that moment and you you pivoted. Yeah. And to me, so, every business is the right system. You know, McDonald's has a system. I have a system, management system, buying system, and then the right team. And of course, uh, if you have the wrong team, you got a disaster business. Uh, but I've been lucky to get the right team. And uh, it's been amazing. Well, that might play into this next question. You obviously have really done well and you're helping a lot of people do well and you have multiple stories of success. Is there any one or two key decisions that you think were imperative to, to catalyze or to be the catalyst for that success? Yeah, I, and that's a great question. Let's dig down deep. I think the number one thing is, what am I good at? Everybody here listening, watching is, is good at one, two or three things or me, maybe one. <laughs> What do you love to do and what do you not love to do? The problem is when people start a business, they feel that no one's ever going to do it like they're going to do it. I have to do it all myself. I have to learn how to do it. And that's not true. So I'll give you an example. Um, I like this. I like talking to people, helping people. I like doing deals. Uh, I'm not the most organized person and I hate accounting. <laughs> I was doing my own accounting, dyslexic accounting for like five years and you know, I would show that I had a lot of money and the bank balance was like $12. Like, how did that work? <laughs> you, know, you know, the receipts in the shoebox, uh, just disorganized. So do what you love, you know, 80, 90%. And what you don't love or do, get someone who's really good at it. And the entrepreneur is to let go. I have great accounts now. I had to let go of it. And now instead of spending 40 hours a month in bad accounting, I spend an hour or two with them, you know, and it's mm -hmm. done properly. It's done right. I had to let go. It, it cost me a little bit of money, but I'm making so much more money because now I can go do more deals. I'm not stressed. So write down the three things you love to do in business, three things you don't love to do. And when you can get someone who's better than you at it. And not only will you make more money, I believe, but your stress level will go down because you're not doing stuff you don't like and you're mm -hmm. not good. At. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing where you're most doing things that you're most productive at and you like to do. Yeah. And build right, a real right. business. And, and building a real business, the business runs whether you're there or not. That's the, the definition of a real business. If you leave your business for 90 days, what happens? For, for the first eight years, I could tell you what happened to my business. It would be bankrupt, go down to zero. Uh, that's not a real business. A yeah. real business runs whether you're there or not. Yeah. Uh, well said. All right. I want to take a commercial break here. Uh, I am interesting. I love the title of your book. Uh, <clears throat> With the, how come that idiot's rich and I'm not? So if you wouldn't mind, just appease me and uh, tell us what that book's about. But also cool. tell us about your company. Uh, who are your customers? How could, you know, how could we be of service to you? Uh, give us a little commercial break on, on what you do. Well, that's so nice. First of all, I wrote that book. It's book number, like, I think, eight. I've written 16 plus. Um, we've all thought that. And one of the reasons I wrote it is because most people think to get wealthy, real estate investing, start your own business. You got to be a genius. It's hard. You need a ton of money. And it's just not true. I know you've done a lot of good interviews. A lot of the most successful I've met are very simple. They started very humbly. There's always exceptions. And of course, some people might be thinking about that title right now. So I uh, always tell people, A, and, and my publisher hates when I do this. You go get any book for free at the library, pretty much. I get my own book off Amazon. Check out Robert Shemin. Or you go to my website, Robert Shemin. Oops, robertshemin.com. And um uh, we have some free videos there and some free reports. And I think there's one 75 mistakes all investors making how to avoid them. My main company is real estate investing. I buy property at big discounts. I also teach other investors how to do it. I have 2000 international investors that I've taught through projects closing between two and 700 deals a month in the U.S. They're five, 8,000 miles away. They're not citizens. They don't have uh, social security numbers. They have an EIN or LLC. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to find out about that, you go to robertshemin.com uh, about what we do there. But um, just say hello on social media. I'm always posting little videos and what I'm doing on uh, Instagram and Facebook. And I even started a little bit on TikTok. Not very good right. yet. <laughs> <laughs> not You're <dancing>. current. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that, that's really it. And, uh, and you know, link it in. If I could help you today, why don't you give me a message? Um, you know, is there a... Is there a a net worth requirement if when you're looking at your investors or because you do a lot of various size deals or yeah so i'm not really looking i'm not really looking so much for investors i really teach people how to do it themselves and we have a community and then we do deals amongst ourselves so i've had people start with negative uh you know a hundred thousand dollar net worth we've had some billionaires come in and millionaires and people of all walks of life who just want to learn how to do a deal or do a deal or have some deals so there you go 
uh, as an aside, uh, I got a little bored about a hundred days ago and uh, I, I started three businesses at once. <laughs> All right. So what, what are these three businesses? Mainly for fun. Uh, one mm -hmm. is a junk removal, uh, Denver, Colorado with a partner. Uh, number two, I do a, a mining, which to me is a part of real estate. And uh, number uh, uh, three, I'm uh, doing uh, lending to uh, non-U.S. citizens in foreign countries. I live here in Medellin, Colombia. Uh, by the way, I've been to 84 countries. I'm free. I do 99% of my work virtual, just like we're doing here. The last hundred deals I bought, I've never been to, you know, see the camera, meet the tenant. And uh, so that's another thing that's, that's mind blowing. We teach people how to do business from anywhere. Um, so uh, give you an example. I'll be in uh, Ivory Coast, Africa. I've got investors there buying in the U.S., entrepreneurs. I'll be in uh, Israel where I've got uh, almost 2000 investors buying and selling here. So it's been a lot of fun. Again, I really believe now with this technology, with the Zooms and the whatever we're doing here, you can pretty much do business almost anywhere and live anywhere. So Robert, can anybody learn what you're doing if, um, they're, if they're willing to learn? Well, and, and I'll say yes and no, because everybody wants to get rich. Everyone wants to buy real estate or wants to be an investor, start a business, but it's not for everybody's, you know, rich. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and what are the requirements? I didn't have an open mind for a year. That's why I didn't do any money. I do any deals. Uh, number two, open, positive attitude. Number three, most people say they want to start a business, but they're not willing to do the work. <laughs> you know, I have so many people, you know, well, I, I spent three weeks of this uh, thing and it didn't work. I'm like, are you kidding? <laughs> you know, you got to master it. And we use see, do, teach. So, you know, if someone's really has the desire and willing to put in part-time, full-time, the effort. And I'm talking about, we work with people long-term commitments. As you know, I didn't get successful in a week or three months. It, first year, I did nothing, made nothing. Then really about a year after that, I really figured out what I was doing with mentoring help. So it's a commitment and most people won't make it. How, how's that for being fair? <laughs> no, I think, I mean, in my business where I help people buy businesses, it's the same answer. I said, there's no magic button in buying a franchise. You, it's a business model. Buying real estate is a business model. You know, you, you have, have to work it. it. You have to put the time in it. You got to, and you have to study it. Yeah. And, and, you know, here's the thing. Most people won't start because they're scared of failing. And I tell people, I don't know about you, Rich. I make three to 12 mistakes an hour. <laughs> I've, never make, make I've never quantified it, but I'm probably tracking right with you. Yeah. And the the good news is if you have a system or a mentor, you know, you're going to make mistakes, and but they're not fatal, you know? And the good news is every once in a while make one or two right decisions and, and, you know, we're still in business, still making money, but you're going to make mistakes. And I, I tell people, and I, I give one of my partners this credit, Gilad, he's kind of our like mental mentor. He says, there's no failure, only learning and success. Yeah. I love it. And <laughs> you know, you're going to learn every day. You're going to do things right. Make mistakes. The beauty of having your own business, when something good happens, when I used to work for somebody else, they took the credit, you know, my manager <laughs> did. And when anything bad happened, they blamed it on Robert, you know? Sure, sure. And now I'm 100% responsible for anything good or bad happens with me, my employees, my contractors. I can't say the contractor ripped me off because I hired him. <laughs> and yeah. yes, he did rip me off. <laughs> but it's my responsibility. We have systems to reduce it, to protect it, so we don't lose our business system, system, system that we've, I've learned the hard way. So I hope that helps somebody to get over the fear, over the fear of making mistakes. You're yeah. going to be well, successful and you're going to learn every day. Well, it, which brings me to the second question. You're in an industry that's always con uh, connected to the economy. Uh, you've been in business long enough to weather quite a few storms. Or crises. Um, <laughs> or crises. And I today I would say... Yeah, I'm, I'm 68. I've weathered quite a few, but I don't think I've seen them all the headwinds come together in one year like we are seeing today in 2022. How are you navigating this as an owner of a company? Uh, do you see a time to invest, to retreat? And how are you also uh, energizing yourself to get up every morning and go face the battles in the midst of all these headwinds? Dude, that's a great question. We have two days, but I'll do yeah, it I'll sure. quick. Uh, Number one, you know, starting with the pandemic, I mean, who would have thought that, you know, no one said, you know, in uh, two years from now, we're going to be wearing masks and we can't travel and stuck in the house, affecting the real estate market. I thought it would have crashed. It went up. Uh, number two, now we're in one of the weirdest times I've ever seen. We got inflation. We got a recession. We have some markets that are still overpriced that people are paying too much. Some are starting to slow down. And you add all the interest rates just went for a 30 or more from three something to six, uh, seven something. 
and the banks are tightening up and the international stuff going on. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> How's that for a, a quick recap? Now, what are we doing? Number one is uh, I don't speculate. So I was buying, pro by the way, last year, you, everybody was a genius. You bought a house and it went up 20, 30, 40% national in a year. And wow, you're a real estate genius, <laughs> no matter what you did. Now is the time for real investing, real people, real markets, and real challenges. So what am I doing different in a nutshell? Number one, I, all, uh, and, and I buy from highly motivated sellers. When the market's super hot, there's still deals. They're really hard to find. As an investor, I don't want anyone hurt. I would love a nice depression. <laughs> Lots more deals, more opportunities. But we're in, a, in a, what I call some type of recession. What am I doing? You have to adjust your numbers. But number one, we always watch our costs. We have a budget. And now we're even tighter because we know things are a little, you know, it's not the great gravy times. Number two, when I buy a deal, I could buy them and I use about 20, 30% below market. Well, right now, the market in certain markets could change, drop 20% in four months or 40%, 30%. So when I do a rehab, I'm asking myself, what if that house that I think is worth 600 and six months is worth 450 <laughs> or 400? Can I still make money? Is it still a good investment? No, I'm not going to do it. So my numbers, my risk factors way up and my numbers have had to change, if that makes sense. It does, but you're still going full steam ahead. Well, you just we're doing, more, we're doing. We did more deals during the pandemic than we did the year before, and I'm doing more deals now than I probably did uh, last year because there's there's more opportunity. So uh, a lot of the what I call the fake investors who watch a YouTube video where everybody's making tons of money, it's so easy, you can get money anywhere. You know the market's going up. That speculation, they're getting out of it. Uh, some of them have bad, bought some really bad deals that they, they paid full price, they made mistakes, they didn't know what they were doing. And we're now buying some of those deals. Mm -hmm. So there's always opportunity. Now there's going to be more opportunity, I, I believe, but you got to be more careful because the numbers are moving, just like a lot of people. I mean, uh, I'll give you a, a, a perfect example. You know, a bucket of paint went from $40 to $80 in six months. Mm -hmm. What's that about? So you got to really know your numbers and your margins and have a big margin there for recession, costs, inflation. Because now you can't just work on a 10, 20, 25% margin uh, on your real estate or whatever business you're in, because that could go away like that. So we're being extra careful, conserve on our numbers, if that makes sense. I think you're on mute. I was on mute, unfortunately. Uh, thank you for- Henry Lips, you. not a problem. No, no, I got you covered. It's just that I was on mute. Um, let me ask you a real estate question, if I could just drift a little bit, just specific to the industry. There's a new competitor out there, maybe not new, but it's, it's voiced as being new. It's the uh, private equity world who's coming in and buying a lot of residential housing. Has that changed? Did you know, did you have to adapt? Is it is it uh, something you're even concerned about? Did, did it shorten up the market or supply? Boy, what a great question. So Zillow came in, a gorilla that started buying thousands of houses. Uh, some of my friends at Goldman Sachs bought, you know, 8,000 houses like in a year. And what's really interesting as an entrepreneur, you can say, wow, that's bad. That's competition. Well, we're like, let's sell to them. Yeah. And they're kind of like, remember that old commercial, Mikey will buy it. It will eat anything. They'll yeah. buy anything. Like they were buying <laughs> deals that I wouldn't buy, but they wanted to buy them. So we sold them to them. So it's all everything in the market's perspective. So yes, in certain markets, they drove the prices up. You know, they bought 4,000 houses in Tampa where we were buying. So they were outbidding us. We couldn't compete with them. We still find, found a few deals that they couldn't find. And then we would sell to them. Uh, so is it competition? I don't believe there's competition. I've trained thousands of investors. They're like, why are you training me? I'm going to buy the house you're going to buy. I'm like, no, you're not. You're going to fund my deals. We're going to buy deals together. I might buy one from you you don't want. I might sell one to you you don't want. They're not competition. They're my best allies. Yeah, love I love, you know, you started this conversation back about having the right mindset. And that's just another example of, you know, having the right mindset and perspective on business in general. Yeah. And the other thing is a couple of them, including Zillow, realized it's their micro markets. There's not one national market. Their algorithms weren't correct. And it's really a local business. You got to know that local market with local experts. And a couple of them, like Zillow, have already gotten out of the business, I understand. Uh, could make it 
because like everything, any entrepreneurial thing, and here's the thing, it's not as easy as you think. <laughs> right. Yeah. But you can do it. It can be done, but you really got to know what you're doing. You can't just say, yeah, I'm going to go buy all these houses or buy, sell a bunch of hamburgers. You really got to know what you're doing. And there's a lot of people out there doing, doing a good job at it. So you got to be better. Yeah. You got to outsmart them, outwork them uh, or work with them. Um, so I want to say that be very realistic. Most people are not willing to learn the real local markets or have local partners there to really understand those streets and real estate can change street to street, you know, over here in Tampa, Miami or Nashville, there's a mansion for a million dollars and you go eight blocks and you can get killed. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you really got to know your local market if that's what you want to do. And, and a lot of them did, did not. Very perfect. I want to stay on the subject matter, but a little bit more personal. Uh, for those who are listening, uh, please go, go to the video when this is uh, out on the uh, social media. Could you get a chance to see Robert in his setting? He's sitting with a pool behind him in a beautiful home. And when we perform the program, he goes, this is my office. Okay, so you you worked hard to get there. But that also took a lot of self-discipline. -dis you know, you said you when you started our conversation, you had to overcome a lot of hurdles from dyslexia to you said even your legs being in braces. So what are you doing today? You know, you're successful, but even successful people need mentors, need disciplines, certain things to get them up every morning to stay on track. What are you doing? So that, that's a great question. I think one of the biggest challenges, if you're successful, is what do you do next? If you meet your goals, I met them. I'm like, well, what do I do now? <laughs> and I've tried everything. So uh, you got to have a purpose. You got to have a reason. I've retired three times, actually. Um, and what keeps me going is, A, uh, what do I really love to do? I love helping people. I love charities. I do the real estate now to support a lot of the charities and to help people be of service. That sounds corny, but everybody's motivated by something else, whether it's money, a new car, a service. Number two is I don't care who you are. We're all the same. Everyone has trauma, doubts, self-doubt. Uh, some mornings I wake up and go, I did nothing last week. <laughs> what am I going to do today? I don't feel so good. I'm tired. And what do you, what do you, what, what are the solutions for me? You got to find your own solutions. Me, I have two mentors. Thank God who keep me straight, <laughs> who keep me on purpose, who keep me focused um, and who keep me motivated. And then second of all, what's the next challenge? Uh, I think a lot of entrepreneurs that the fun part is building the business. You don't think it's fun. You think it's challenging and there's ups and downs and sometimes many disasters, but you look back now and go, that was the fun part when we had nothing and we were starting and we were struggling. We had to do this and all those crazy, funny stories you have. And I look for those now. That's why I started a new business, new challenge. Can I do it? Who am I going to do it with? You know, will my systems work? What am I going to learn? And, 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 and surprise, things uh, uh, started happening. And that's, I think everyone has to look for their new challenge, their new goal, their new motivation. And that's the scary part when you're not motivated and it's not, it's not just the money, you know, money's nice, money's exciting, money lets you do things. It's really the challenge and a beat up service or having an impact. Uh, that's what keeps me going. And I will say this, we're people. So also what helps you motivate is you got to take care of yourself. A lot of entrepreneurs forget that. I was on the phone day with a friend of mine. He's not taking care of himself, working 80 hours, stress the max. You got to eat right. You got to have your religious, spiritual life in order, your relationship life in order your health life in order. And uh, that's, you know, you're the investment. Um, and I think that's very important. A lot of people in our society forget that, you know, work, 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 make it happen, be successful. But if you don't take care of yourself, you just shorten your success by 20 years <laughs> or 30 yeah. years. I like you, what you said. Yeah, <clears throat> we're, we're the investment, not only financially, but physically, spiritually as mentally, well. Mentally, emotionally. And I got to take breaks every now and then. I got to go to retreats. I got to talk to my mentor. Uh, you got to you got to have somebody in your life who keeps you on track and motivated. And I'll say one of the best ones are uh, I have one son, you know, the, the the complete honesty of a kid. They're some of the best mentors. You know, dad, you're not that cool. <laughs> <laughs> dad, what are you doing? You know, that makes no sense. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What would you uh, say to our listeners? There's two listeners, the, the entrepreneur who has a business already and thinking about expanding or, you know, his, their business interests, adding additional revenue stream or the person sitting in corporate America going, you know what, it's time for me to get out there and go do something. What would, what advice would you give to those listeners? For the person, the corporate person who wants to do it, who's thinking about it, 
everything's a test. Go out there and get a customer, get a product, start something, you know? Uh, you know, you, you, you'll, you'll learn so much the minute you actually get in the business. You know, we use see, do, teach. You got to see someone do it. You got to do it. And then the best way to learn is to teach. But until you do it, it's just theory. You know, let's go get a customer. And then when we get that customer, Ross, it wasn't anything we thought, or the money's different, or the price is different, or they like this, or they're like that. That's, that's one of the best advices I have. And I would get mentors of some sort uh, to grow uh, in today's environment. Uh, first of all, I think now uh, with this, the internet and all the social media, your market is the world. Think bigger, do bigger, be bigger. You can work pretty much anywhere. And uh, again, get out there, get the right system, the right people in your business, the right partners and, uh, and, and grow it. But there's that balance. And that's what we'll forget. Be very careful. Yes, you can make a lot of money <laughs> and do well, whether it's real estate, your own business. You can also lose a lot of money. Um, so really look at the good, the bad, the risks. And we're changing all the time. Um, I'll give you a crazy example. Political risk. They just uh, uh, elected a, a very leftist government that some people don't like. Um, and my partners and I sat around and go, well, what are we going to do? Because the, the dollar went uh, up and the pesos crashing here and all kinds of stuff's going on. People are leaving the country. And we're like, well. We'll start working with the government. They pay their bills. <laughs> you know, you, make, found, you, you know, found a new customer. Some people love the government. Some people don't. Like we, we love the government. We'll do business with them. There's <laughs> always a way. And there's always a way to limit risk by knowledge and education and testing. So, you know, there's that balance of, yes, you need to jump in and get started, but really get some experts out there. And again, I want to be very, uh, I think most people listen to the wrong people. People that have never started a business, your friends and family, your banker, or lawyer, or accountant, who are very smart people, will give you all the reasons not to do it because they've never done it. Make sure you're talking to someone who's done it. You know, if I want to learn to play guitar from Nashville, which I don't play guitar, I'm going to go find a great guitar player. I'm not going to listen to a, 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 a banker <laughs> about how to play guitar. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. with money and investing, we always listen to our friends and family who've never done it. And they're going to give you really not so great advice. Yeah, I always remember my dad when I was, in, I was in real estate, but he was also in real estate. And he says, you want to learn how to invest in real estate, just go buy a cheap condo. Uh, <laughs> figure it all out, learn it. And then all you do is you just keep adding zeros behind it. There you go. <laughs> Get, Get started. Get and also, started. You know, the, and the only reason I'm successful is I don't really know that much, believe it or not. I just ask a lot of questions. I find people that are, and most people are willing to help people, respect their time. I go to people that have been doing it five years plus who have success, who are at a level I want to be at. And offer to help them first. Hey, how can I help your business? I like that you did that. What can we do for you? And then listen, I've got some questions. What what I need to watch out for? How'd you do it? And uh, being an entrepreneur is a bit lonely. So most of these entrepreneurs will help you, will talk to you. There's groups, associations that you go to um, to get that benefit of knowledge and experience. And uh, I still, to this day, I say, uh, the, the older and smarter I get, the less I know. I just ask a lot of questions. <laughs> Well, thank you. And uh, <clears throat> that's why we I do this podcast and, and I'm why I'm extremely grateful and on behalf of our listeners, extremely grateful for you taking out your time to share your wisdom and insight. This is how we learn. And this is people are gracious and generous to do that. And you're a perfect example of that. Robert, one more time, how would our uh, uh, listeners get a hold of, you, hold of you should they want to? Yeah, check out uh, Robert Shemin, S-H-E-M-I-N on uh uh, Instagram, Facebook, say hello, robertsheman.com. And if it's okay, I'd like to give one last one second advice to the people, if that's okay. Sure. First, I met my mentor. He said three things to me that I didn't understand uh, for a very long time. He said, number one, five minutes is a long time. That means use your time, block your time, make things happen. He said, number two, business and money is a fun game. Have fun with it. Don't take it too seriously. I think a lot of us take the business, we get worried, take it too seriously. And, uh, uh, number three, he goes, I don't work with anyone that doesn't make a long-term commitment, five years plus part-time or full-time. I'll never forget that. He said, you know, first year, yeah, you might make some money, but if you're in it for five years plus, you probably will be successful. In other words, I'm not going to give up for five years part-time or full-time until I have that success. Stick with it. Stick with it. Absolutely. Great advice. 
Robert, on behalf of all our listeners, I, I want to say thank you for your time. It's been a wonderful conversation, and I think we could go on forever. Uh, and I would be happy to, but I think I'd be taking up more of your valuable time. But with that said, I hope you have a great day. I look forward to seeing you. Everyone, happy investing, much success, and enjoy the ride. <laughs> Thanks again. Rich LeBrun here. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast, Get It Done Entrepreneurs. If you are a successful business owner who would like to be on this program, please visit us at rlebrun.com forward slash podcast and fill out the form and we will reach out to you. If you got something out of this interview, would you share this episode on social media? Just do a quick screenshot with your phone and text it to a friend or post it on the socials. If you know someone that would be a great guest, tag them on social media to let them know about the show. Include the hashtag Get It Done Entrepreneurs. I love seeing your posts and guest suggestions. We are regularly putting out new episodes and content. To make sure you don't miss any episodes, go ahead and subscribe. Your thumbs up ratings and reviews go a long way to help promote the show and mean a lot to me and my team. Want to know more? Go to our website, rlebrun.com, or follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time.